arrived this morning. We had a, a wee little nap, and now we're going for a wee little spot of tea in the QVB, which is what they call it here, the Queen Victoria Building, uh, which is down George Street. Come on down to tea. Our first stop in any civilized country is for tea, and Sydney delivers in spades. The tea room at the top of the QVB is renowned for its regal tea service, which we enjoyed with great relish. Yuri loves scones to an almost unnatural degree. And Tara is a fan of finger sandwiches, so high tea is something we can both agree on. But tea isn't the only regal thing about this place. It was thrilling to explore the QVB's many levels with their historic details, buried shops, and royal clock and top-rate craftsmanship. Malls like this put the malls I grew up with to shame. I feel like I might run into the queen here. But we didn't come to Sydney to stay inside all day. There was exploring to be done, so we hit the streets looking for our next adventure. So we're headed down the Quarry Street on the way to the Sydney Opera House. Welcome to Sydney. Obviously, home of the Sydney Opera House. Uh, we're gonna go get a little closer, and then tomorrow we're gonna head over to the Harbor Bridge and actually climb the Harbor Bridge. Sydney is a marine lover's paradise, built on a magnificent network of bays, rivers, and waterways, which made it a constant delight to explore, both on the water and off. We're in The Rocks, which is, uh, I think, one of the oldest parts of Sydney. And apparently behind me is the oldest pub in Sydney, Fortune of War. And we're going to go there because pubs. But we couldn't just hang out in pubs without a little snack. So we grabbed a bite to help soften the blow of Tara's first encounter with Australian cider. Tara doesn't drink alcohol. You just drink. Um, drink a half of the half of a pint. I think it's called Quincy. James Squire. That's my name. Squire. Something Crush. Or, or, or orchard, orchard Crush. I, I didn't even drink the whole thing because it was there was a lot of it. It is a cup like this big. Um, big. But I did it the oldest pub. And so another cup of tea was in order. Once my head was back on straight, we ventured into Sydney's oldest neighborhood, The Rocks. Built in the late 1700s, the buildings were originally made of local sandstone, hence the name. It was considered for a while a slum, plagued by gangs and the bubonic plague. But you've got to admit, it has a lovely sunset. The Rocks has also been plagued with controversy, as local residents have been engaged in a long struggle against being pushed out by gentrification and urban development projects. Adventuring is hungry work. So as the sun set over Darling Harbor, we went in search of food, but kept getting distracted by all the pretty lights. But we finally found something tasty to recharge our batteries. So we are enjoying a little fish and chips and Bundaberg ginger beer right here in the Sydney Harbor.
breakfast time. No Pac-Man in sight here, but in Australia, shopping centers like this are called arcades. So you can see behind me, we're on the Harbour Bridge. And those people up there are doing the Harbour Bridge climb. We're doing the much less, much less rigorous Harbour Bridge walk. We're just walking straight through. But uh, apparently that's pretty badass. And also costs $200. And also is scary. We're gonna take the one. From the bridge, we had an even better view of the Sydney Opera House. So we're going to show it to you one more time. Okay, two more times. Okay, three more times. You can see why it's one of the most photographed buildings in the world. She's awfully photogenic. So we're out in front of Luna Park, which is an amusement park from the 1920s, right out here in Sydney Harbour. And we're gonna go in and see some of the old rides. It looks creepy. It looks a little creepy. I'm so old, this reminds me of an episode of The Six Million Dollar Man. But Yuri wasn't content with just the old-timey rides. He was seeking slightly more modern thrills. Tara doesn't like the scary rides, but since we had a friend along, I decided to do a little myth-busting of my own. Hey Grant! Is it true boys on theme park rides scream less than girls? <laughs> but Grant would have his revenge, as Yuri couldn't take the pressure of the hair razor and screamed like a little girl all the way down. Then we hopped on a ferry to see the harbor from a different angle. We were on our way to visit the Australian Beastie Contingent at the zoo. All the animals. We're inside the Sydney Wildlife Park right now and it's so much fun. Snakes and creepy crawlies. We're inside the park and what's inside of you? I have cider in my belly. It was really good cider though. It tasted like ginger beer. Tasmanian devils, kangaroos, and wombats delight all travelers big and small, as Americans like us sometimes think they only exist in Warner Brothers cartoons. But deadly is often counterbalanced by cute. Like this echidna, which only looks scary, but I kind of wanted to take home with me. I mean, I am a fan of all egg-laying mammals, echidna and platypus alike. Me and my kangaroo friends. <laughs> And of course, the koala, who was napping and declined comment. So we've spent the afternoon playing with all the wildlife, from koalas to kangaroos to all sorts of creepy crawlies. It's been a lot of fun. 
But we can't forget the biggest beast of all, the lizard king of the zoo, Rex, the giant saltwater crocodile. He may look lazy, but he's also the closest we may ever get to a living dinosaur, so I'm gonna cut him some slack. And by cut him some slack, I mean I actually had to have him approve the footage before we used it. Sheesh, Godzilla's less picky about her image. The next morning, we traded animals for history and took a trip to the Susanna Place Museum, where we traveled back in time to see what life was like when people lived in Sydney over 150 years ago. These tenement houses were actually occupied until the 1990s, but luckily for us, they've dressed them to appear the way they might have back in the 1890s. It may sound a little morbid, but I'd like to believe that our favorite Australian lady detective, Miss Phryne Fisher, may have solved a murder or two here. There was even a small grocer's shop included in the construction of the apartment block, and it still sells old and new sundries today. And someone was silly enough to give me the chance to run it for a moment. What are you selling us today? Uh, I'm selling uh, fairy drops, uh, lemon drops, <laughs> and um, here, 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 these are your fairy drops right here. I'm selling soap and all, all the things you might need. Uh, custard powder, if you're making Nanaimo bars, for example, you'll need that. Um, I've got the salt, vinegar, all the, all the essentials. Thank you. Then we traversed the Royal Botanic Gardens on our way to the next stop on our historical tour of Sydney the Hyde Park Barracks. We learned a great deal about the people who worked and lived here, and what crimes, both dastardly and petty, they had committed to have been exiled to Australia in the first place. But make no mistake, the city, nay, the country itself, could never have been founded without their labors. Though I wouldn't have lasted more than a night or two in those crowded rooms full of hammocks, that's for sure. Not to mention the hard labor and extreme living conditions. I'm a tenderfoot. Our time in Sydney was up, and it was time to go west, young man. Welcome to Perth. We've just touched down in Perth. We've checked into our hotel. We've got this uh, amazing church behind us and apparently a lot more uh, in store. Uh, we just sat down at a little cafe called The Dome, which we already want to order everything off the menu. Uh, and then we're going to go do a little wandering, exploring. Maybe go to King's Park. Maybe go to King Street Arcade. Everything is named after the king, apparently. So we're gonna go visit the king. Though Perth is commonly described as the most isolated major city on Earth, it also has been listed as one of the most livable, and we didn't have to venture far from downtown to be suddenly wandering the expansive King's Park, which offers an impressive view of the city and the mighty Swan River. It is also home to monuments and memorials to fallen soldiers. But we must admit to having ulterior motives in coming to Perth. You see, there's an island just off the coast called Rottnest Island, and we were going there to visit some friends. So we boarded yet another boat to travel down the Swan River towards Fremantle, where it empties out into the Indian Ocean. Luckily, there was plenty of beautiful scenery, and because we hadn't hit the ocean yet, it was a smooth ride. This would end once we hit open water, and Tara headed below decks for the short ride to our ultimate destination, missing the spectacular double rainbow. What does it mean? We'd finally arrived, and were met by exactly the welcoming committee we'd hoped for, the Quokka. These little guys were the reason we'd come here in the first place, although the scenery wasn't too bad either. Rottnest Island is tiny, but has an interesting and colorful history. In fact, when Dutch explorer Willem de Vlaming sailed across the Indian Ocean in 1696, he missed colonizing Australia, 
because upon arriving first at the island, he was scared off by what looked like a land overrun by giant rats, and named it after the Dutch for Rat's Nest. If not for the brave Quokka Guardians, Australians might be speaking Dutch today. Since then, it has been used as a military post, boys' reformatory, an internment camp for foreign prisoners, and during a particularly shameful period, as a penal colony for native Aboriginal men. But today, it's a tourist trap, where the Quokka still run free. We're about to show you an awful lot of quokka footage right now. But hey, that's why we came. And when else are you going to get to see these adorable little marsupials? Besides, they're just so cute. I mean, are you kidding me? Come on, look at that face. Yuri had to physically restrain me from stuffing several of them into my suitcase. But can't you tell why I was tempted? This one asked if he could come home with us. Because we visited in June, Australian winter, the island was almost completely deserted, and we humans were the minority, outnumbered by quokka and gulls by a significant margin. Since we had the place to ourselves, we awoke early on our last day to wander the peaceful island and visit the Salt Lake. But it was finally time for us to go, and the boat carried us back to the mainland so we could head home. Thanks so much for joining us as we adventured through Sydney and Perth in Australia. It's time to grab your passports because we're headed home. We're going up, up, and away. See you next time.